Africa Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today, we're joined by Joshua De Silva. How's things going in New Zealand, where you're currently touring? Uh, it's going good, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, no, it's going good, man. We're just really excited to get the last test on the way. And yeah, just enjoying the good scenic um, things that New Zealand offers. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a beautiful country. So let's take it all the way back for yourself. Um, talk us through your early childhood in Trinidad and your earliest memories of cricket and how you got into the sport. Uh, well, I grew up in a in the north northwest side of Trinidad in Diego Martin. Um, always used to play. I wasn't really much of the cricket. I used to play in the backyard um, with my neighbors, my dad. Um, but I was a big footballer. Loved my football. Um, played football right through. Um, secondary school up until I had to choose. Um, but yeah, I started playing in the backyard. Um, when I got into secondary school in Form 1, I decided, my dad was like, look, just go and play for the cricket team. And it was the under-13 team, I think it was. And yeah, I just started. I started and then I actually picked up wicket keeping. Then um, nobody else wanted to do it. The coach had the gloves. I was like, all right, coach, give it to me. So I took the gloves and from there, uh, I was just always a wicket keeper as well. But yeah, that's just where it started and some of the early memories. Yeah, I read about your um, interest in football. What position did you play? Oh, all over. I started midfield. I went to striker. I went to centre-back. I goalkeeper for a while. Um, yeah, I was an all-over-the-park kind of guy. Yeah. The, the, am I right in saying that De Silva heritage? Are you, like, the, your heritage, is that is it Portuguese? Yes, it is Portuguese. From so, a um, bit, of, bit of Ronaldo in you? Uh, no, Messi, man. Uh, Messi. <laughs> oh, you a Barcelona fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you talked about wicket keeping. Is it just um, you know just a case that you just wanted to be involved all the time? Is it was that the appeal to it, or was there other elements to it? No, it was just um, nobody else wanted to do it, so I I picked it up, and it, later on it came to me that um, the wicket keeper is the first man on the list. So you always have to have a wicket keeper. Everybody can do everything else, but not everybody can wicket keep. So it worked out in my favor. And then talk us through, you know, I was reading again that at 17 years old, you came over to the UK um, for yes. this Kieran Pollard scholarship, Old Wimbledonians yes, Cricket yeah, Club. Really. Yep. Talk us through it. I think you were 17 years old in 2017. Um, how did yeah. that all come about? I was, I think I was 18. And yeah, um, I got through, I was with my club, Queen's Park Cricket Club, David Furlong and Kieran Pollard. They chose the um, two guys to, to go over and play some club cricket club cricket and experience what it's like to live on your own and do things for yourself uh, so luckily I was chosen to go uh, and experience that and I went over with all Wimbledonians big shout out to them they uh, it was a great time I learned a lot over there um, the people I went and stayed with Jono, Timmy all of them they were they brought me in like I was their family so it really taught me a lot with my batting and everything because I had to be very disciplined I had to be the backbone to score runs. So I scored 760 something runs in the league and an average of 64. Um, so it was a good a good outing for me and a great experience and definitely shaped me into what I am today. Yeah, so you were a young man then, obviously the pressure of being the overseas kind of pro. Is yeah. that something that you you know you embraced? Uh yeah, I didn't really know much too much about it when I first got there. Um it's only a little further in I was like, damn, this is it's a lot more. A lot more riding on me that I'm needed to score runs, so uh, it didn't really bother me to say, um, but definitely knew I, I had a big role to play and just wanted to play it the best I can. And as a wicketkeeper in English conditions, obviously it just seems and swings around a lot. Yeah. Did you find it difficult your first time in the UK keeping over over a season? Um, it was it wasn't too bad actually. Um, Probably I was actually there in 2015 as well with Queen's Park. We went on a club tour to England and I got a few games. There. I was pretty young. I was about 16 then. And um, but yeah, we we had a good time and the keeping aspect, it's a, always a bit challenging in England. The ball moves a lot after the bat and it wobbles a lot. So it's a bit more difficult and yeah, learn a lot coming into those those that season. Then you made your Trinidad uh, four-day debut so in twenty uh, December 2018. Yes, was that, again, a proud moment for yourself? Oh, yeah, of course. It's always been a dream to play for my country. Um, that's where it starts. You always want to go to your country and move up. Um, it's been the goal ever since, I would say, I probably started taking cricket as seriously as I can. It's been a goal to play for Trinidad and then eventually West Indies. So, yeah, that was definitely one of my proudest moments. 
And then talk us through this uh, emerging, West Indies emerging player team. You obviously picked in the 2019-20 season. It's a regional tournament, uh, the Super 50 tournament. You guys win it. But for yeah. those for those that don't actually uh, know the tournament much about it, can you just explain a bit about it, what the team uh, what was and, and the journey to lifting the trophy? Oh uh, Yeah, well, it was the, the regional Super 50 tournament, which is our lift, list A tournament. Um, it comprises of all of the regional teams and they bring in two two teams to play along with the regional team, which is the West Indies Emerging Players and the CCC team, which is Colleges Combined Campuses, which is the university that brings together a team, um, all the UE universities. So um, our team was basically, we, we call, well, we didn't call ourselves, but we were called the ultimate rejects because wow. all of us were um, players that did not make our franchise teams. So we came together as a last minute team and the whoever was not picked in their their team, like I wasn't picked for Trinidad, so I got selected to play for the West Indies Emerging Team. So that's how we all came together and we gelled really well. We went, we started off on a, losing the first game, but after that, um, it just went uphill from there and went on to win the title. Would you say that's your best moment in cricket to date? <sighs> no, I think it was until I got to wicket keep against England. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. And then what was the influence that Floyd Reefer had on that team and in your game in particular? Oh, yeah, he had a big, big influence on us. He brought us together really well. Uh, we only came together two days before the tournament. So it was a big ask for him and a big ask for the guys to, to gel well. But he had team bonding exercises. As soon as we got there, we went to a five, um, five Islands, which is an amusement park in Trinidad, and we had a good team session. Um, after the first game, we look. We decided if we're gonna win, we have to know each other on and off the field. So we just decided we had to to do something, and we just spent a lot of time together. And he helped me a lot personally with my batting, even through that tournament. Um, and then when we got to England, we did a lot of work. So yeah, he's been a, a big part of everything so far. Where do you see? Where did you see your game at that stage? Uh, more suited the shorter form or the longer form? Because obviously, that following year, you've basically become the, the first choice keeper for Trinidad. Um, Dennis Ramden, obviously a test veteran for West Indies, 74 tests. Uh, you took over basically his position. But where did you see your game? Um, more suited to the shorter form or the longer form? Uh, definitely the longer form. Um, I never really played much T20 cricket. Uh, even up until CPL, I had not played much T20 cricket at club level. Um, it's My club is a very big club. We have Nicholas Puran and... So he, he would all normally keep in the, the T20s so I wouldn't get the chance. But yeah, definitely love the longer format. I love to play all, but test cricket is definitely what I want to do for a long time. But obviously you want to play all the formats and, and play as much cricket as you can. But I see myself going towards the long format, format more than anything. And then January 2020, you got your first first class century for Trinidad. Yeah. You didn't get picked on the, on the England tour Obviously, a big squad come over given this whole pandemic that's, that's engulfed the world. How was that as an experience? And obviously, you did mention that you did uh, get to come on and did keep due to an injury. Um, but yeah, talk us through how that tour was for you personally in terms of your development, confidence and mindset going forward. Oh, yeah, my, my first West Indies tour, um, I was a reserve, but I couldn't have asked for anything more. Um, I was along, among the team. I saw how a uh, test team operated. I saw the training. It was a big difference from coming up from regional cricket, but I adjusted as quickly as I could. And yeah, just the intensity, how we train, when we train, everything is uh, a higher level. So it was just a good opportunity for me to really see how it is in the setup and then put it into my game. And I got the opportunity to wicket keep. And yeah, I got to see how the players operate. Even Joe Root and um, Rory Burns, who were batting at the time, I got to see how international players um, operated out there. And um, even Jason and Shannon and all of them, I got to see how we operate. So it was a good experience just to start um, my introduction into Test cricket. So yeah, it was a good, a really good time. Yeah, so in one of the tour games, for to mention, you did also get a century uh, in in one of those games. But yeah. you, you mentioned specifically the differences in terms of the training element, the differences. Can you go, can you say, um, just, just for the viewers, um, specifically, is it just more like specific drilling or are there other elements, more fitness involved? Can you just give a little bit of insight into the world of international cricket from your eyes? 
Oh uh, yeah, well, it's it's a lot of everything. You do a lot more of everything. You train more. You train harder. Um, the intensity is always there. So when you're doing something, you're not doing it halfway. You're doing it for a purpose, and you're doing it to get better at it. So a lot more drills. Uh, the net sessions are a lot more intense. Bowlers are just not just bowling the ball. They actually they're working on something as well. So it's going into the session with a purpose. And yeah, anything we did from wiki keeping to fitness to batting, everything was done at a higher intensity. And just to get something out of the training each time. And as a wicket keeper, does your strength and conditioning have to change? Because obviously you're squatting a lot more up and down as opposed to your fast bowler running in. Um, can you talk us through your strength and conditioning. Oh uh, yeah, well I've done a lot of work even before this um, this tour with Ronald Rogers, who is our strength and conditioning coach here. Um, so it's a lot more legs, back and, and abs. So, but I obviously have to be fully, fully strong, but yeah, it's a, a, a pretty tough program, but I'm getting through it. And any tips that you can give for young wicketkeeper batsmen in terms of compartmentalizing both skills, you know, the fatigue elements, say if you're out in the yeah. field for a long time and going out to bat, um, any tips you can give for youngsters? Oh, yeah. Just, just keep your eye on the ball as long as possible. Once you're keeping your eye on the ball, you're going to catch it. Um, soft hands. Um, but yeah, you're going to get tired. Just um, last week, I was playing the, the A team against New Zealand A. We kept, I kept 150 overs. Um, so it's it's always the mental side of things. You're going to get tired. You will get tired. There's no doubt about it. Your legs are going to hurt. But yeah, it's how it's how strong mentally you can be because you still have a job to do. If it's not the last, last inning, you still have to go on bat. So, yeah, you still have a job to do. It's never over. And the keeper has the worst job on the field. I will always say that, but I love it. There's nothing nothing more I would do. Um, you just have to enjoy it and embrace, embrace the, um, the fatigue and use that mental strength to get past it. And then how was the experience um, playing in the CPL earlier this year, a few months ago? Obviously, you said you've had um, lesser experience in the shortest form of the game. Mm -hmm. How was that as an experience? Obviously, no crowds, but... You're playing in a massive tournament. How was it? Oh yeah, it was it was a great experience. Um just going in, I, I didn't have much expectations of myself. I just wanted to go in and play cricket and actually play just get the opportunity. When right? I was given the opportunity, I played quite a few games. Um so unfortunately we didn't do too well, but I thought I had a pretty good CPL um and pretty and, and showed my that I can play the shorter format as well. Um but yeah, I got to mingle with Chris Lynn, Ben Dunk, even our coach Mark O'Donnell. They they had a lot of faith in me and yeah, it was was a great tournament. And then currently you're um, in New Zealand at the time of recording, which is a few days out from the second test. Mm -hmm. You've been called up to the actual 14, 15 man test squad now. I know it's yeah. not nothing's been made official. So uh, you, you've got a great chance to be making your test debut. But if it happens in the next game or in a few games down the line, what will it mean to you if... You know, if and when Jace comes up to you and says, you're in. Oh, yeah. I, just, I hope I get the opportunity, but it would it would mean the world to me. I know my parents and everybody back home supporting me. So, yeah, it'll be a very, very special moment. And I'm pretty sure it'll be an emotional one as well. I've been working towards this. And, yeah, I can't wait for it to happen. What one piece of advice would you give? Because your, your rise from actually starting playing cricket to basically being on the verge of of getting your test cap is it nine years nine or ten years only so in the in comparison to a lot of a lot of people that's a very short time it just shows your talent yeah. but is there one like nugget of advice that you could also just give that's you could say you know this is the reason why why my path has gone this way um, I don't think there is a specific reason, but it's it's just about never giving up. I, I only played on a 19 regional on a 19 cricket. I really started taking cricket as seriously as I could from Form 5 when I chose between football and cricket. So it's never too late. And once you keep working hard, your results are going to come. I put I worked really hard throughout the years. Um, and yeah, just put in that effort, put in that effort every day in and out. Um, still a very long way to go. I'm nowhere where I want to be. Um, fitness wise in my game especially um, but yeah I've I've worked hard and that's the main that's the main thing just work hard and respect the game once you respect the game cricket will always give you favours and then just to end on can't can't not mention your your YouTube channel the Joshua's got a got an epic channel I've got to say I'm going to put the link in the description below 
So whoever's watching this, please check it out and subscribe. But yeah, talk talk to us through it. Why have you, um, um, you know, when did you start going to think about this? Is, is it a way just to kind of build up your brand and also giving back to the to the fans and just giving a little insight into your world? Is, is that how the idea uh, came yeah. about? Originally, it started as um, when I was in New Zealand in 2016, I, I put a GoPro on my head when I was waking and I got some pretty good shots. I had an epic run out. So I put that up and I was just like, I'm just going to put this on YouTube. Let's see. Let's see what it does. And in a couple of weeks, it had 10,000 views. So I was like, wow, uh, maybe I could do something. So I just and when I came back, well, that was I started. I filmed that in 2016 and then I started. I posted it in. November of 2017 so almost two years later I posted that video and then I just yeah I put it put a GoPro on my head every practice game for Queen's Park at home and yeah one video is at 900,000 views another one is at 500,000 views um, but yeah it started off as just a GoPro just putting it on my head see what I could do um, and then when I got more into watching YouTube and, and watched that people share their lives um, and I was looking at footballers, I was looking at American footballers, I was looking at um, all kinds of different sports, baseball players, but I never really saw anyone showing their lives for cricket. So one time I did a day in the life of a professional cricketer, that one did really well. So then I was like, okay, maybe people want to see the life of a professional cricketer. Um, so recently I changed the name, it used to be All Things Cricket. Um, but then I changed it to Joshua De Silva so I could develop a brand and help people and show people that, look, social media is not just for showing off and showing, showing, putting up, posting pictures. It can actually be an asset to your life and bring an income and do a lot more for you. So, yeah, it's just about showing the journey and showing the insights of a professional cricketer. And, yeah, that's the, that's the road I'm going down now. Now, I've got to say it's absolutely epic um yeah as you say it's fantastic to get an insight from someone that's at the top of the game so yeah so please guys whoever's watching this hit that subscribe button for joshua check it out leave all the comments and likes etc um but yeah joshua really appreciate your time um all the best hopefully it was at the time of recording we don't know if you're gonna get that test cap but hopefully you do if not i'm sure it will come uh, thank you very much for having me it's been a pleasure and yeah thanks very much the new york Hagram cricket last stories Joshua De Silva, thank you.